Right, good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Um, as Jess introduced me, my name is Rebecca Darcy. I work for a national charity called the Youth Sport Trust, where we believe in the power of PE and sport to um, change people's lives. So tonight's workshop is around the PE um, and sport premium. The workshop is around, you know, it will challenge you to, to think creatively, really, about your, your investment in, with your PE and sport premium, obviously positioning PE, school sport, and physical activity at the heart of your school and your school's recovery um, as we come out of the pandemic. So without further ado, we shall press on. So the outcomes of of this evening are for an update on the national guidance. Unfortunately, there is no, there hasn't been a further announcement of continued funding as yet. The information and the, the insight we're getting from the DfE is all positive. It's tied up and in and around with the P and School Sport Action Plan, which is a wider government strategy. Um, the noises that we're getting are positive, but there is nothing kind of in black and white yet as to the premium continuing. So if we'll we'll just that box that one off before we start. There is going to be no, you know, gleaming announcement tonight that it's continued. But the, the hope is that it is. The, the noises are positive, but as I say, there is, there is nothing actually confirmed at this moment. We'll cover how understanding how your premium can support your recovery curriculum and then ensure that your action planning and the, the focus on the intent is there and it's informed by insight and that impact is measurable. So as you may already know, um, we've got, got the funding again for this academic year. Um, it can only be used for P in school sport. It's, it's some of the only ring fence funding that comes into schools. So we are really lucky in that sense. I'm sure other subjects would love to have ring fence funding that comes in. But we're lucky that it's that it's in our, in our area and in our subject. So as you may know already, it means that you should use your premium to develop or add to the PE physical activity and sports activities that your school provides and build capacity and capability within the school. The big thing I always say is think about where would you want to be? So if the funding should end next year, I'm not saying that's the case, but if it should, what would the impact have been of this PE and sport premium in your school? You know, what, what would be left behind? Uh, and that leads on to really the things that you can't spend your premium on, which are, as you'll know, you can't use it to employ coaches or specialist teachers for the PPA. Um, that should come out of your course staffing budget. You can't use it to teach minimum requirements of the national curriculum for PE. And you can't use it to fund capital expenditure, which would have been in the past things like um, a multi-use games area or a trim, tr you know, a daily mile track, that kind of thing. Obviously, you can still use it for equipment and that kind of thing. So exactly like, like I say, I can't stress enough that the importance on sustainability, almost the, the so what factor. So you've had this money, you know, so what? So it's always a good question to keep kind of asking yourself. As you'll know, the key indicators are there and this is what your sports premium is, is kind of measured against. And these are the areas that it should be hitting. You don't need to um, equally spend the money across all five. It can be a bigger focus on, on two or three of them. Um, the, it doesn't need to be kind of equally partitioned. So uh, we're finding that a lot of schools, it's normally in it, the bulk is in one, two and three, three particularly with Brown Staff CPD. Um, but if I can ask for a bit of interaction from you, just so that it's not me talking all the time with my uh, dulcet tones, where at the moment do, do people are people spending most of their premium? I don't know if you want to pop it in the chat and we can be picking that up. But where, what sort of things? What are the key things that you're spending your premium on at the moment? Obviously, everybody can read the, the comments that are in there, so I won't read through them. But it's great to see. Well, it's great to have people contributing because if not, it can be a little bit bit hard work. But it's good to see, obviously, less in competitive. Sport. Is, is that due to the pandemic at the moment, do you feel? Obviously, equipment, after school clubs, um, coaches working with teachers, as you'll know, that's absolutely fine as long as it really is them working alongside the teachers and upskilling the teachers with that knowledge um, and confidence to be able to continue that within school. That's a great one, orienteering course for the school environment, because then that definitely gives. Um, that sustainability element in school. So thanks for sharing that. 
yeah, COVID's frustrating for events. Hopefully, you know, we're, we're going forwards with that, aren't we? And I'm, I'm seeing it as a light at the end of the tunnel. Sports partnership, yeah, they're a, a great thing that can support you. And not only of how to spend your money, but more importantly, show, being able to show the impact. So if you are using a sport, if you've got a local sports, school sports partnership, you know, when you do fill in your indicators, you know, go back to them and, and ask them to check and challenge you as well as doing it yourself. Oh, that's lovely, Emma. Great that you'll be hoping to offer that out to other schools the orienteering. That's, that's really, really great to hear. Okay. Thanks for that. I know it's not easy to be interactive, but we'll, we will try our best. So obviously, um, it's great to know where you're spending it and where you're seeing the impact. And we will touch on later about how you know where to spend. So reporting, um, again, it's published on your website and it must be published by the end of the summer term or the 31st of July. One thing I would say is um, please use it. Please use the online document that you put on your website as an ongoing tool. So don't just wait until July and then put it on, uh, particularly if you're in the offset window. Put it on there as a working document with the intent uh, you know, of what you're planning to do. And then as you do things, obviously, I'm not suggesting on a weekly basis by any means, but as you do things, perhaps even just every half term, update where you're at so you can review where you are and almost use it as a working document. And that way you'll probably find it more useful rather than an onerous task when it gets to the end of summer kind of, of reporting back. The online reporting must include the amount that you've received, which is, you know, 16,000 per primary school plus £10 per head. A breakdown of how it's spent or if you're using it as an ongoing, how it will be spent. The impact that's been on pupils and their attainment uh, and participation and how, how those things are sustainable. So obviously, if you are in the offset window, it's something that offset will look at on your school website. So as I say, it's well worth having that kind of up to date on there on a regular basis. Swimming again, as you know, you need to publish the percentage of pupils in your year six cohort that who met the national curriculum requirement. Um, and that's not only the swim in the 25 metres, it's also being proficient in a range of strokes and the South Save rescue in different water based situations. You know, we're an island as a country. We've got water everywhere. And obviously, even in land, we have, you know, lakes, rivers, ponds. It's really vital that we have that um, water safety kind of covered for all our young people to make sure they're, they're safe. Um, obviously, for your year six data, you can bear in mind that it might be that they went swimming in year four. So you need to have that record for when they get into year six. And that's where it's you can use your premium. So if your school swimming goes in year four, and you get, say, 70% of the, the year group that pass, you can then, for that 30% that didn't, you can then use sports premium for top up um, to send them. You might want to send them the year after or buy passes for them to go on the weekends or with the family, um, but you can use the funding for that. But when you report on your premium at the end of the year, it's reporting on your year six cohort. So for supporting um, the recovery curriculum and the needs of your pupils, so obviously we are still coming through the pandemic, so we're thinking now with the COVID lens, what are the current priorities um, in school and, and what are the issues that are kind of keeping you and your SLT or your governors awake at night? So um, what are the, the burning issues with, in school at the moment? If you want to, again, pop them into the chat just so that it gives us a bit of a discussion point or equally unmute. If, if there's something that's that's burning that you'd like to share and, and discuss. So again, I'll just give a couple of minutes for you to populate the chat. So what, what are the current issues? It might be like some of you have put in there when we looked at the indicators about, you know, not being able to attend competitions. Is that something that, that you'd like to push more? Is that something that's affecting your pupils? Yeah, thanks, Natalie. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a common thread across the country, and that you know the well-being of young people and and behaviour issues for for some children. I think it's just being very disruptive, hasn't it, to just general kind of routines, and and that can have an impact on those things as as well as the lack of physical activity.
Any more for any more? Yeah, no regular after school clubs. Yeah, thanks, Nicola. It's hard, isn't it? Especially when you use those halls for, for lunch and things like that, the, and the amount of cleaning that it takes. Yeah, it's a good point, Emma, and it's hard, isn't it? It would be nice if we could do, do those things, and, and we appreciate the need for that, but if they could do that through through PE rather than taking it away from PE and, and do some active maths and active English, so keeping some of that physical activity in there. So a bit of a, a summary slide, really, um, of what's going on in, in, in our world and compared to your world. Obviously, kind of marry some of the comments that you put in the chat there. We, we know that children, there are 3.2 million children that do not meet the 60 minutes a day chief medical officer guidance. We've got 40% um, of 16 to 24-year-olds reported feeling lonely, and that's compared with 27 of those aged 75, which is quite an alarming statistic, really, isn't it, when you think of, of young people of that age who are in, you know, independent by that age and are able to go out. So it's something to be, you know, that, that really struck home for me, that one. We know from other surveys um, through the NHS that young people have the lowest life satisfaction of 24 countries. Those countries in the OECD, they're all countries that are comparable with ours. So places like Germany, um, Belgium, you know, those kind of countries. Um, 67% of young people believe in that the pandemic will have a long-term negative effect on their health. So there's some really challenging kind of statistics out there. And, and as you put in the chat, we're seeing those kind of represented into young people in our schools. Um, and resilience has fallen. You know, we're, we're seeing children that don't have that resilience so much anymore and, and are tending to give up rather than keep trying. And that's something that we know is a really valuable and needed kind of quality for young people. Um, and that COVID's undone that progress, you know, the, the, the narrowing of the gap, that gap has again grown um, and really impacted upon that. So it's now thinking about the, the areas that we cover within the subject and, and what we can do. So in your role as subject leaders, obviously you've got many tools um, that are available to us to support pupils right now. Um, but we like to split these out through the work that has been done by the Physical Literature Association. They can be split into five kind of distinct areas. So play, which is anything that involves enjoyment. Now, I know myself when I go out and do things with my children, I've got two girls who are 11 and 10 um, and they're both both keen footballers. And well, they're into just about everything. But that's another story. But once I start playing with them, you, you kind of forget about the enjoyment that we all get from play and therefore how valuable it is. And it's something, you know, that we really need to be giving our young people every opportunity to play, um, not only for the physical activity, but from that, that enjoyment perspective and the use of using their own imagination. And then we've got physical activity, which anything that uses kind of energy so any bodily movement. So it could be within a lesson. It could be, you know, scootering to school. It could be active breaks and it can be extracurricular. So it's pretty much anything that involves kind of movement, really. Um, Physical education is no national curriculum subject, and that's around the learning to move and moving to learn. So it's very much the taught um, learning that, that takes place. Then sport is everything. Think governing body wise, think netball, cricket, you know, all of your sports um, that, that where we have competitions and perhaps events. Um, and then active learning. So learning through movement. So uh, as we touched on before, active maths, um, active English and bringing that activity into the classroom. So obviously the, the importance of it all is, is that impact on physical literacy. And right now, um, with the competence and confidence of young people um, being impacted by the lockdown, I think we really need to focus on that. Uh, and perhaps that's something that you can focus on for your, the spending of your sports premium. So why, why an active recovery? And why do we think that, that you know, we've got this emphasis on, on the importance of, of using PE in sport and physical activity through your sports premium funding. Well, every child and young person will have had their own unique 
kind of experience through the COVID pandemic as we have as adults. Um, but obviously the, there's five levers, as you can see there, of recovery that have been developed through um, Barry Carpenter. Um, one is around relationships and then community, the transparent curriculum, the metacognition, and then, and, and then that space. So it, in our subject and it, you know, in its many forms that we deliver it, it can really support the, the recovery of our young people. Um, and it's important to perhaps consider that against these five levers of recovery and, and how that fits. So, you know, we won't, you know, a lot of children have been affected by COVID and therefore relationships and, and the way that they, that perhaps were thriving have, have struggled and it's how we can restore that. And obviously through playing, through sport, that's that's quite an easy kind of way that you can structure things to, to get people to, to be communicating, to be building relationships. Um, we know obviously we had a lot of homeschooling, so it's important to understand, you know, that transition back into school and also perhaps supporting children to go back to community clubs because there can be a lot of um, perhaps hesitancy. And I know from local clubs where I live, they've seen quite a, a turnover in young people, perhaps ch not children leaving, but then different children joining, perhaps some activities that, that children just, just didn't want to go back to because it's been such a long time since they've done those before. So it's a really important thing to, to perhaps consider and, and perhaps uh, revisit within school those those exit routes that you've got locally and supporting children to make use of those um, again having a transparent curriculum so the children know what's happening and know what they're doing and that can help them kind of get back into that um, obviously that metacognition the learning different environments it's, it's vital that we acknowledge that some things will have worked for some children in during homeschooling and in the way that classrooms are perhaps structured in school and other things won't so it's you know that's another factor to consider and then obviously everything seems to go at a, a huge pace doesn't it I think we all we all perhaps enjoyed a little bit early days of lockdown because it really did change the way that we all, we all viewed things and I think having that one hour a day when you could go out to exercise made us really value that time um, and then obviously as, as things come back and school comes back clubs come back you know the world is a little bit frantic um, but it's about providing that space for, for children to almost find their voice and talk about the things that they've enjoyed and the things that worked well. So maybe even having that conversation with your class would, would be good. Obviously, the, there's absolutely tons of research out there. And there, there was we've done a lot of research with SPEAR onto things that affected children. Um, and therefore, out of that, we know all the benefits of being active on academic performance, you know, we know that being active improves stamina, it makes children more focused, the less fidgety in class, more engaged, uh, it burns energy, clears the mind, you know, it just sometimes having a break from, from the class of things, it's all getting a bit frantic, you know, stand up and do a wake up and shake up can really kind of change the day. I know myself working from home behind this computer, it gets a little bit monotonous at times, and sometimes just try and go out for a walk. Which we really try at Youth Sport Trust to practice what we preach. And we're encouraged to kind of break the day up with a bit of exercise, just a 10 minute kind of, you know, little power burst. Um, but it really can help refocus the mind. And that's the same for, for young people as well as yourselves as teachers. So the research has found that, you know, following the lockdown restrictions, people have, people have reduced physical fitness, decreased well-being low level behavioural issues and um, the loss of ability to concentrate in class. So again, things that were picked up in the chat. Since taking part in active recovery curriculums, young people have increased their physical activity, wellbeing's improved and ac academic progress has improved and that young people want to do more physical activity and would like to have more lessons outside. Um, you know, so we've, we've seen that from across the board from schools reporting that who have really put P in sport and physical activity at the heart of the curriculum. We've now got a video. This is from a school called Floral Gardens, um, and they've really put sort of P in sport at the heart of their recovery. Um, but in the school community, there have been 34 
um, deaths that are directly related to, to the children and to, to staff. Um, and what we found was that the, the family members were already established at the school, but the additional PE through the curriculum PE and the well-being linked to that really did make a difference. In lockdown, I didn't do that much exercise because you just felt like, like you're trapped and you don't want to do anything. You just don't want to be active. And, you, and it's, you're doing the same thing every every day. You're getting really sick of it. And you just don't want to do anything anymore. And so we're now adding in uh, two strongholds which is curriculum PE. Um, this is a topic-based, uh, first topic-based um, learning It just really brings to life from, from young people, although I imagine for that teacher it was pretty hard to record that video, almost wondering what's going on behind all the time. Um, but it was really good at the very, very end. One of the unexpected outcomes was how, like, bringing this in through COVID and having that recovery curriculum, using the premium to support that, was how much it's um, in, increased the amount of understanding probably between the teachers uh, and the whole school staff of the importance of, of physical activity. So then that goes through to almost, you know, through to your lunchtime supervisors who, who understand that, you know, by helping the children at, at break and play times to and lunchtime to be more active, the impact that it really has a, across the board and, and onto all things such as behaviour as we talked about. So if you just have a think for a few minutes around the, the current challenges of, as a subject leader in relation to these things, so strategically, operationally, resources and engagement, and be thinking of how you can use your sports premium against these, these areas. So any challenges that you've got um, under these headings, I'm not expecting them all, you know, by, by any means. Um, but just have a think and then how could you use your sports premium or how are you already using your sports premium 
it might be that, that as we go through this evening, you'll be thinking, actually, no, we're on track. We're doing the right thing. So please don't be, be put off thinking, oh, well, I need to change. You, you might not. You might already be on the right track. So if you just want to pop anything in the chat while you have a think about that and then we can pick that up. I'll move us on. I know if people are typing, that's great. Keep typing it and I will pick them up. But I'm, I'm conscious of time and I want to make sure we get onto the actual reporting um, and the resources that can help you with that. So just flashing up the key indicators again, because now we're going to look at um, the process, you know, and understanding what to action. So firstly, you know, gathering the information to, to take the actions and then you start to put the actions into practice, the result of the actions, there'll be some outputs and then you can see the outcomes. But, you know, what have you seen? And this is all, those are all the steps I've whistled through there. Um, I don't want to teach you to suck eggs, but obviously it's that planning tool of, of what do we need to do? How do we know it's working? And then working through it. I think um, Jess sent out before and the link to our PE premium toolkit. This is something that we've devised. We often work with AFPE, which is the Association for PE, which is the reporting template that you can use to report on premium. But we've developed this premium toolkit. This is free to access on our, our website, which you've already had the link for. And it, and it just breaks down the indicators um, and gives you some, some tools that you can use to really reflect on you know, what you want to start doing, what you want to stop doing, um, and, and what will it look like when you've done it. So there are two parts to the toolkit. The part one is an introduction to the indicators um, with messaging from a head teacher that shares good practice how they've you know, achieved improvements um, and plan for sustainability. And then part two is the sustainability actions and it's a pro forma to help you to consider where you are now and what you need to improve. So again, it's key, key indicator one, as you know, it's all around um, keeping pupils engaged in regular physical activity. We know it's 60 minutes a day is the Chief Medical Officer guidelines. And it's around 30 minutes of that is within school. So it's thinking about how do you break that down in school and what do you use any of your premium to support that um, and what can be done. So it's around creating that physical activity culture within your school and kind of getting it at the heart of the school so that then so it becomes the norm. So they're not bolt on activities that you do. It's just part of that everyday norm within school. So it might be that you do things like a daily mile. Or it might be that you do wake up and shake up after lunch every day. Um, again, if you want to put anything in the chat that you're doing to build up those minutes, then please do. Obviously, on the days that you do PE, it's covered. You know, do you record things at, at break time? Um, one primary school that I visited recently, they do a marathon club. So um, on a lunchtime, over a half term, children could go out in their uniform and go onto the field and they can either walk or run. Um, laps of the field, a maximum of seven a day they can do, but over the course of a half term, they'll be rewarded in terms of the distance that they cover. They know roughly how much a lap is and, and can calculate it. So they have leaders kind of marking the children down. And then they're rewarded like a 5K certificate, 10K, half marathon, and then there are some that, that get that full marathon. But it's a really nice way of, of an informal kind of activity that they can go and take part in. They can do it every day if they want, if they're working for the marathon, they could do it once a week. And like I say, they can walk it, they can run it. But it's um, just, you know, an example of, of something that's that's kind of out there for them to do. Yeah, go noodle, brilliant. Activate for and super movers. There are so, so many resources out there that you can use. Um, if you haven't heard of it, we've got an active recovery hub. I'm pretty sure it's on a slide later on. But that has got a whole host of resources on. Not it's it's not owned by us as you support trust. It's across the kind of industry. There is absolutely loads of free resources on there that all support physical activity. So you know if you're looking for new things, please do have a look on there. But yeah, go noodle and activate are really popular ones for that. So on the baseline and impact, you know, it's it's knowing around getting the helpful data that can inform, help you inform and make those decisions. So physical activity trackers, again, a school that I spoke to in West Yorkshire, they invested in some physical activity trackers and they passed them around the classes so that they could work out who the, who were the inactive children 
And actually, they found it was quite surprising. Some of the people um, who they thought would be more active actually weren't. Um, but that was something that they used to make help them make an informed decision about who some targeted work needed to be for. Um, looking at your curriculum map, how active are the units, uh, curricular provision, you know, who, who's delivering that? What are they delivering? Is it, you know, can all pupils access it? You know, are the same children accessing everything? Obviously, you can track that through registers. Um, a lunchtime activity plan. Do you have areas in your playground that are for certain year groups or certain classes on certain days? But it's, it's almost knowing this information and then using that to inform how you plan to, to deliver through key, key indicator one, because that then will help you on the reporting back. So we've got a top tip sheet for um, achieving key state, key indicator one. I, can, I always want to say key stage. I don't know why. It clearly doesn't say that. Um, I won't read those out to you, but obviously there's lots of things on there. Again, that is on our website. That's supported through Complete PE, which is a, um, a company who do schemes of work. But again, this is, this is free to access. So it's just giving you 10 top tips there around key indicator one. Anybody got any questions so far? I can literally see myself and Jess, so it's really hard to know. So this is what the, the reporting template looks like. And as I say, this was created by the Youth Sport Trust and AFP. It's, it's available on both of our websites. Um, and it, it literally shows you, gives you examples of how to complete it. And this gives the kind of level of detail that you, you need to be putting in. And this is why I say it's really beneficial to use this as a working document rather than kind of waiting till the end of the year to try and, although you'll know and plan down what you, you pre, your spend is going to be on, it's, it's perhaps a bit more manageable to kind of break it down. But it really shows you there, of, of, you know, the ways to write the impact. So, you know, with that data, 89% of children agree with the statement. Um, and, it, and it's having that evidence there to back up what you're saying. So it's, you know, really clear to set out, really clear to follow. Any questions so far? So obviously, if, if you have printed off the pro format, then great, you can use that now. If you haven't, don't worry, um, you'll just perhaps be able to jot some notes down. But thinking about that key indicator one around 30 active minutes, have a think about where you are now, what's still outstanding, do you need to and can you adapt and refocus through a COVID lens? Are you measuring impact and is it sustainable? These are key questions for, for every indicator um, as, as we go through. Again, I think if we were sat in a room, we'd, you know, it'd be much easier to, to sort of chat through what people are doing and, and what's working and what isn't. If you want to put anything in the chat or on mute and discuss, you can. Feel free. If not, we can plow on. Key indicator two is, is raising the profile of peace, PE school sport and physical activity uh, as a whole tool for whole school improvement. So that's, you know, really positioning it within the heart of the school. Obviously, um, getting governors on board can really help with that because they can be checking and challenging. Oh, Emma's just put in, she's new to the role, so it's, it's all no. Don't worry, Emma, that's absolutely fine. Hopefully it will you won't go away too overwhelmed and we'll go away with some, you know, ideas of, of where to go with your sports premium and what to, to do and not to do. So it's using, for, for key indicators too, obviously using the things that are out there to help you raise that, that the profile um, of P in school sport as a tool for whole school improvement. I think the key thing sometimes is don't try and do too much. If you, you know, if you want to focus on sort of, well-being across school make that the focus and, and almost underpin that with key indicator too it's you know there's so much out there it, it can be really easy to to get overwhelmed but actually if you if you just you know take a step back and and reflect um and spend some time then and consider how it can can be kind of whole school um and what small changes can be made then that can can really support you as to, to not be becoming overwhelmed Again, we have some more um, 
top tips that you can use for key indicators too. So, you know, let's pick a couple out. Um, highly active pupils will attend better. So, you know, how we know that research has proved that after 20 minutes of moving, pupils' brains are more active, there's more blood flow, they're more able to concentrate more. So the more we can get our pupils to move, the higher they will attain. So obviously, you know, sometimes if we can do a wake up and shake up in the morning, it really gets the young people focused and therefore we'll, we'll get the best out of them. Um, engaging with parents is a key, you know, teach parents about the importance of being physically active. Um, you know, if, if a parent's had a bad experience of PE, they might not value it, they might not put that value on, on, on physical activity. But actually, if we can, you know, show the impact that it has, perhaps if you have, when you have, you know, if you have introduction evenings, you know, on when you first come back in September, if you have any of those, perhaps, you know, focus on the, the need for, for children to be physically active. I know from some other schools that I've worked with, they, when they first come back after lockdown, the children are encouraged to come back wearing trainers so that they could be physically active at, at break times and lunch times and to almost encourage that. And that was something that they've now continued because actually it really did kind of encourage them to, to be active in the playground. So that might be something you want to consider. Uh, again, introducing role models. You know, if you've got somebody in school that's, I don't know, a gymnast or they, they're a yoga, they go to yoga outside of school. Can you use, you know, your staff, you know, your role models aren't you in school, as are all of the staff. So, you know, if you can pick out people, you know, have you got a crazy Newcastle United fan, for example, who could almost champion kind of football and that kind of thing and, and use the role models you've got within school to, to really press the message of, of why it's so important. So key indicator three is around increased confidence, knowledge and skills of all staff in teaching PE and sport. And as I say, a, a lot of schools spend quite a significant amount of funding um, through PE and sport premium on this. And that's absolutely fine because, again, it shows us that we've got that sustainability there. But it's thinking about, you know, what are the things that will help the young people in your school um, to develop and, and where do you want to spend that money? And if you're looking at things whole school, is it worth investing some of the funding in uh, a scheme of work, but then some training to go with that? Because, you know, sometimes you can have a fabulous scheme of work, but if people don't quite have the confidence, whereas if you can get some training with it, that might be money well spent to make sure that it, that spend really has the impact on young people. Um, it should This should link to your vision for PE in your school. It, you know, you might have reviewed that recently, but obviously, you know, this could, if, if you have, that's worth making that connection. I think that's something that I've said would definitely pick up on. Um, COVID might have impacted on staff confidence, you know, to deliver PE. Um, and obviously that fragmented approach in that we, we haven't been able to use all the facilities that we've usually had. Therefore, certain things might not have been delivered for the last two years. And therefore, we might have that gap in, in kind of confidence to deliver that. So some of this data here is from the Active Life Survey, which is something that Sport England and deliver. And as you can see, attitudes towards sport and physical activity across all of those areas have, have gone down. So we know that it's something that, that has been affected by COVID and something that we really need to, to focus on. On the right hand side, this is again another free resource on our website um, that considers the potential behaviours that, that pupils are showing and therefore and suggest some things that you can do against those so it's actually really hard to read on this screen <laughs> so apologies for that but i'll make sure that um the link for that is sent through as well as on the slide so that you can read those but it talks around sort of um loss of functional capacity and then the things that you can do to build on that so activities that build stamina strength um but again like i say i will send that through for you I don't know if many people have seen this. This is our U Sport Trust curriculum blueprint, and it's all around um, that the PE curriculum doesn't fit, one size doesn't fit all. Um, the blueprint reflects the balance between the physical and personal outcomes of, of PE and school sport. Uh, and I think that's a key part. We know that a lot of you know the personal outcomes around well-being and the life skills are absolutely crucial for our young people as well as those physical ones of, of kind of fitness, enjoyment and movement confidence. Um, but we know that obviously some children develop at different rates. COVID's impacted that in, in a variety of ways. 
perhaps with my own children, they've probably done more physical activity than they were doing before. Um, whereas there'll be other children who have done a lot less or even none. So, you know, using the blueprint, it just shows how this can, you know, move and sway for young people, but obviously all trying to work through those progressive outcomes on the right hand side there. We believe that this approach to physical activity um, with a focused on each young person and monitoring where they are and monitoring the progress that they're getting really supports the journey of discovering and valuing um, PE and sport for them. So how does that kind of mirror to, to how you plan your curriculum and, and the outcomes for young people in your school? Again, top tips for key indicator three. Um, and that's around being confident to deliver all areas of physical activity, uh, physical education, sorry, uh, and receiving two hours a week. Can you um, just indicate in the chat if you do two hours a week or, or what you do, if you do more, if you do less? Is it less since you've come back after the, you know, through the pandemic? Is it, is it more? Are you doing extra things? Are you putting on extra lunchtime clubs? Two hours timetable, Natalie, I like it. Again, Faye, that's great. Less. That's great. Seventy-five minutes. Okay. Yeah, playground leaders. Have they have they been able to continue for your playground leaders? Is it quite a sought after role? I thought so. Thanks. It's it's really good to see that a, a lot are doing two hours, but where you're not, that you've got other things in place. So ensuring that staff are confident, you know, information to, to make, make those informed decisions about your premium spend could be around um, staff questionnaires, um, through professional development plans, through, you know, that line management support anyway, having the schemes of work in place and that, the, you know, showing that it's progressive, your curriculum mapping, pupil attainment data that's showing, you know, the progress and then lesson observation data. So probably all things that you're doing already. But when you come to, you know, write about your premium, all these things will help you make those informed decisions. Oh, that's great. Mrs. Scott's put that um, they had to rethink around playground equipment and purchase sets, you know, for bubbles. And it's worked better than it did before. So there is a silver lining to the, to the cloud after all, which is great. As I say, that school where they put the trainers in, it was just a, a really simple thing they did, but it, it really did have you know, an, an impact on the school. So this is, this is almost just going through the process. So some schools realise that following the lockdown, the activity levels of pupils had dropped. Um, so through family surveys, they knew that only 20% of the school were, were active enough during the lockdown. I don't know why that last star comes up first. That should be last. Um, and in lesson observations, they realised that the pupils weren't active enough. So therefore, they play, um, placed more focus on it. Um, teachers started to plan about health related um, curriculum and focus on that highly active PE in general. So we really focus on high intensity, active kind of PE lessons and pupils act accessing those, those two hours of PE a week. Obviously, that increased the pupils' stamina um, and developed their strength and flexibility. And then the staff felt confident to teach that curriculum and 100% of the pupils in, improve their stamina. So that's a really simple, you know, bringing it to life, like flow process for you. Just that's the kind of thing that you can go through in school, perhaps in a staff meeting of, of a way to sort of bring it to life, of identifying an issue and kind of working through it to, to the resolution and, the, and then the impact. And that's the key thing. It's focusing on that impact that you can see sort of at the end. I haven't whizzed over the last one, but I'm just conscious that 
as we say, all the things that we've been through on all of the key indicators, those questions are all, they're all relevant for all of the indicators. So we won't go through each indicator. Um, I'd rather open it up now to see if you've got any questions. These are all of the things on our um, primary peer and sport premium resource page that you can access and it's all free to access. Um, so there's the evidence in the impact template, which is the reporting tool that we talked about, those key indicator top tips that we went through, uh, the toolkit, um, talking about how to invest your, your premium funding. And then there is some information on there about a P and support premium, you know, support package, and there's links to schemes of work that can be purchased. But, you know, that's all there for you to access um, and to review. So if, if you can, I'll open it up now to any questions. Ah, I like that. It's just, just put that much better now children are coming to school in PE kit. Uh, and longer lessons because obviously it cuts the change in time. Um, my own children's school, they've actually gone back to school uniform and I, I've got to say I was really disappointed and I'm a link PE governor so I did feed that back as you can imagine um, because for me certainly for the younger ones it just cuts out so much so much wasted time almost uh, and I think it really shows that the importance of PE because you're saying actually we really want you to do it still so come in your PE kit and come ready to I'm ready to learn so yeah thanks for that Faye that's that's important anybody else feel that in school is, is anybody else still are the children still coming in PE kit go for it Jess No, so I was just going to say, uh, um, my daughter's school um, at secondary school, they go into school in their PE kit still, and it, it's I think it's brilliant. Um, so it's, it's happening at secondary That's school. brilliant at secondary. Yeah. My daughter would love that. She has PE first thing on a Monday, first thing on a Thursday, um, but goes in full uniform. So, And it's brilliant because no items are now lost. She goes in the PE kit, yeah. goes back in the PE kit. So. It does you. not need as much ironing as school uniform. Exactly that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a good point, actually, for Mrs. Scott. When it came to nativity, they're not independent, they're getting changed. So I guess in some ways that is one benefit of being changed for PE. Um, but then is is you know, that's something that could be could be done at home. Yeah. In terms of content presentation wise, that, that's, that's me completed. But obviously, if you've got any questions, please feel free to ask. If there's anything you think we could have covered tonight, you know, please let me know because we can amend these presentations for future use. I hope you found it useful. Um, the main thing to do is, is, is talk in school and, and, you know, talk to people about what you're planning on doing with your premium and, and the impact that you want to see. And then being able to almost document that impact. So it's kind of almost, you know, assessing where you are, where you want to get to, and then being able to show the difference that the investment of the premiums made. Uh, sport for schools to fundraise and they provide an Olympic, Olympic gymnast to promote it. Brilliant. Thanks, Katie. Um, I'm just going to say, if anybody wants to unmute and ask anything, um, please do, or, or yeah, continue to pop stuff into the chat. Um, as um, Beck says, that's the presentation over, but um, yeah, any questions, fire away, um, pop them into the chat box, or if you do think of anything afterwards, um, you would all have received um, today's Zoom invite from me. So um, drop me an email with anything else you'd like to know, any questions, and I can direct them um, to, to Bex or I can answer them myself on behalf of Active Lincolnshire. Um, uh, um, uh, the reason anything, Natalie's just put in the chat, anything on deep dives? N no, but I do have some questions, some offset questions um, that I'll send over to Jess that she can send out to you all. And they're just real pointers on, on offset on what what they'll look for around obviously intent, implementation and impact, but also um, where I'm a link governor, they've just had a PE deep dive Ofsted and the PE coordinator shared back with me some questions that she was asked, which was just in November. So just before Christmas. Um, so I'll send them over as well. So I'm sure Jess will share them with everybody there. 
they're a really useful check and challenge, even if you're not in the, the offset window. But as a link governor, I, I was interviewed as a governor, but I was not asked a thing on PE, which I was slightly disappointed about because I actually went kind of ready and prepped and absolutely nothing, which in some ways was probably because she, you know, she'd obviously picked up a lot of information off the website. Anna, as the PE coordinator, had, had you know, already been kind of interviewed that morning and observed. So um, it maybe I see it as a positive, but yeah, I will definitely send those those questions that have been tried and tested over as well. Thanks very much, Vex. Um, yeah, and I will be the the recording from this will be on our website along with the resources um, from Bex, and then I'll email them out as well, so we should have everything. Um, but if that's it, if nobody else has got any questions, um, I'll let you get on with your evening. Thank you very much for attending.